and welcome back this is the clay golem once more back in Stormwreck isle we pretty much have finished everything we need to do here only one thing we're missing to complete Stormwreck isle and bearing in mind we are going a bit overboard with some of our prep um, and getting everything lined up ready to go because mostly we're fiddling with things that we you know are over baking the pie a little bit just for um, you know practice reasons um, but the thing we haven't done yet is cover some of the additional encounters that the party might have uh, around the place when they're traveling now in the module they have um, four different things they have the hot springs havoc they're their owl bear the kobold renegades and a very open-ended encounter called What Lies Beneath, which actually really isn't an encounter apart from just some ideas of how you could build your own encounter on that, um, which we're not going to look at. So I want to create three new scenes in this video. The Hot Springs Havoc, There That Albert, and the Cobbled Renegades. Hopefully this won't take us very long. So um, I've created a folder in my scenes here called Island Encounters. So I'm gonna create a new one. And let's start with the Hot Springs Havoc. Island Encounters, create that new scene. Uh, don't want it to show navigation. I do want a background image. Now, um, I have, I've not uploaded them yet, um, but I have downloaded some maps here from uh, Jumpy Solution 7223. Uh, who has posted on Reddit some maps for people to use. So there's no copyright on those or anything, so I'm happy to uh, to use those, which is really, really useful. So a big shout out to Jumpy Solution for that. Um, and they're quite nice. Okay, so let's, uh, let's save that first. Let's jump over to this scene. Here we go. So this is the Hot Springs Havoc. Uh, I think it's quite a nice little map, isn't it? Uh, and it's already got some squares on it, which is good. So our usual thing, let's configure. We've got the basics, we're happy with that. Don't want it in navigation, etc., etc. Do you want to do grid? I'm gonna change our size to 50 and we need to do, hang on a minute. Uh, oh, I thought the map had a grid already on it, but I think it was actually this grid. So the question is, am I happy with that grid where it is? I think the answer is probably yes. I'm just going to move that over the slightly there. There we go. We've got our grid. <laughs> Easy done. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to stick with that. Oh, it has changed our size. If I change those sizes now, is that too small? I think that probably is too small for this area. I don't want this area to be too huge. Uh, I think I'm going to put it at 75 and have it, yeah, about in the middle. Yeah, I think that's good. Happy with that size. So we've got our grid in already. Now, just looking in the adventure, what we are going to need, there's only one location here. So I am going to create a, um, I'm going to create a new journal. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, Island Encounters. I'm going to put it just in the Stormwreck Isle. Okay, uh, I'm going to add a page. I'm going to call this Hot Springs bleh, Havoc. Uh, I don't really need this to be a location because, yeah, I don't need this to be a map location because we haven't really got map locations for these. We've just got the one piece. So uh, let's do our classic copy and pasting our stuff over. You guys are probably a bit bored of watching me do that. So this is not immediately visible. So we'll keep keep that, put our line in. So essentially what we've got here, so we can do these things simultaneously. Go to our monsters. We've already used these, which is great. We have got fume drakes. Let's drop them in. Ooh, that didn't go quite as I wanted it to because it's highlighted it. I have to be watch out for that. Drop it in there. Thank you very much. Three fume drakes. The mischievous creatures. Da, 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 da. A character who examines the water needs to succeed on A. So we've got another skill check. Let's put that in here. I know this is... Uh, <laughs> i got to concentrate. <laughs> Wisdom. 
and the skill equals perception. DC 10. Uh, I know it's a bit overkill putting all these dice rolls in here. We could just ask them to do it, but I like... I, I, I like having them in here. This is what I mean when I say slightly over baking the pie is we're putting perhaps a bit more effort into this than we might otherwise do. But it's kind of it's useful to kind of practice these things, I think. And uh, for those of you who didn't watch the previous videos, you can see that we can just add these skill checks right in there. Uh, nice and simple. So Spring Waters spends 10 minutes bathing, can roll one hit die. Um, and get some healing which is nice and quite generous because you know if your party's got any brains they'll be coming back here every two minutes <laughs> every encounter so right, quick back to the hot balls have a nice rest get some free healing and off they go somebody's going to try and bottle it to see if that works um, handle that as you would like i would suggest it's the act of bathing rather than drinking of the water that helps with that the ergo they can't take it with them unless they get really, really clever. And to be honest, if they get really, really clever, I'd let them get away with it for a while until the mineral content of the water um, gets used up or something. OK, so we've got another skill check here. Uh, roll skill. The ability we want is intelligence. And the skill we want is nature. DC 15. I'm going to close our brackets. Identifies the mushrooms as wild, uh, sorry, as wild wind spores. Okay, we haven't got wind spores. Should we quickly create an item? Let's quickly create an item. Uh, da, 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 da. Create an item. We're going to call this, uh, we're just going to call it loot. Uh, hang on, what does it do? It releases the cloud spores for one hour, they don't need to breathe. Okay. So I'm going to create this as loot. I'm going to call this wind spores. Let's have this as a common thing. Uh, they're worth 30 gold each, which is well worth having. Um, we don't want to configure anything there. Under details, we're just going to put this as, uh, let's just put it as a treasure. Okay, um, what about an image? We could reuse one of the images we've already got. Uh, da, 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 da. Of course, I haven't got them in here. Where did I put Where did I put them? I don't want to spend ages looking at this stuff. Did I put them in Shipwreck Isle instead? Token images. Myconoid. Let's use Ruby Morale. So at least we've got a picture in there. Okay. So we've got these over here now, wind spores down at the bottom, which means I can now drag that in there. Oop, uh, hang on. I don't... Let's make sure we're putting this in the correct place. There we go. Uh, rare fungus, blah, 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 blah. Worth 30 gold and 2d4 available. Okay, I don't need to do any more than that. I'm happy with that. Let's just slap that down here. Um, Stick that in the middle there, make it a bit bigger. Boom. Okay. So that's our that's all we need. Now it does mention about here about these fume drakes. Um there's three fume drakes. So we can close that and we can pull out our fume drakes and we can stick them. Oh, let's stick them anywhere we like, really. They're not necessarily going to be together at the beginning. Uh, and I'm going to start off with them hidden. That's done. It, it sometimes it's really is that simple now we've got things like we've already created the fume drakes um we already know how to do the journals that's that's done <laughs> okay uh next island encounter we want to do there there owl bear there there owl owl bear in our island encounters we're going to create this one uh don't want it showing in navigation and again we're going to take us to our new place where we're keeping stuff choose and we've got this other map from uh, jumpy solution which we can use save that jump across and here we go another beautiful map um, and again we've got a grid already on here 
are we happy with that grid? Let's configure. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah, that quite be. I think I'm, I might see if we can change that to 75 again. Yep, just make them a bit smaller. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now, one thing I didn't do for Hot Springs Havoc, I've got carried away slightly. Lighting. I'm going to make this global illumination. Um, I'm just not, I'm going to use token vision, I'm going to use fog of war, um, but I'm going to leave global illumination on for these. Um, there's no inside area for these areas, so I'm not too worried about it. Uh, so just back on hot springs, ambience. Um, there might be ambience I want to do for this one. Let's go back to, so I'm rushing now, weather effects. Can I do fog? How's that? Hot springs. I think that works quite well for this, doesn't it? Yes, we can still see what's going on, but that looks foggy. Brilliant. Quick little update. Much, much nicer. Okay, there, there, Albert. Let's go back to configure for this one. Um, happy with the grid. Lighting. Also going to make this a global illumination. This is only a small encounter. I don't need to spend hours detailing this. Weather effects for this one. Uh, pfft. No, I'm going to leave that as is. Easy. Right, so uh, again, we need to create that or go back to that journal entry, Island Encounters. We're going to add a new page. There, there, Albert. Again, just a text one. And we're going to be able to do this. Okay, so very similar. Copy, paste. Make that bold because that's the way I like to do it. And if I'm consistent with that, it I'll get used to what I need to uh, be popping out. Uh, reading out, rather. Okay. Da, 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 da. Very straightforward. Basically, uh, a very straightforward encounter, this one. Uh, that could involve combat, but there's other ways to do it. Now, have I already got an owlbear? I don't think... Yes, I have. Uh, Albert with a messed up picture. Why? Why has that got a messed up picture? Can I bring in... Uh, can I bring that picture over that way? I'm pretty sure I can. Um, oh, use token image. There we go. Ah. Right, get rid of that. Get rid of that. Use token image. Get rid of that one. Get rid of that one. There we go. Right. <laughs> uh, and now uh, I'll add a frame over here for that one. There we go. All right. A little bit messing around. I've now got an owlbear. Am I happy with that picture? No, not really. Have I got a different owlbear? Let me have a look and see if I had... Because I, I don't like these top-down ones where you can't really see what they are. I mean, you do you. Do you. Absolutely. 100% you do you. Um, I'm just not sure that I'm... Happy with that. I didn't do an Albert. Okay, I'll leave it as it is for now. I'll probably update that and change it again later when um, I've got something else to do. So I'm going to copy that Albert, 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 drag it over here. Bosh. So again, I've got that quick link to it if I need it. It's hostile to all characters. It views them as intruders in the territory, though its goal is to drive them away rather than kill them. Yeah, right, that's going to work. Uh, originally part of a performing troop, the Albert was stranded after Gerberba. Any character within five feet of the out uh, notices a wooden whistle hanging around its neck. Okay, a character within five feet can attempt to grab the whistle if they succeed on A. Oops, this is going to be a skill. Oh, this is going to be just a strength check, isn't it? Now, I predicted I might need this, so I've got in my other window, apart from the module, I've also got uh, from when we did the tips on the journal update video and I put in the description I put the journal codes um, for you guys to make your life easier but <laughs> also for me so, um, so it's not a saving throw damage skill ability uh, a check perception so is it yes yeah, so it's going to be a check so check check strength hang on so it's check strength and then just the number 
um, which is 12. Uh, now, it says passive, create the horrible line. Ah, right, no, I don't need that. Okay, so we can just do that. Um, so I just want to close this and check that that's come up with what I'm expecting. Oh, look at the right one. DC strength check. It's not going to allow me to do it because I haven't got any actors on here. Get out there, Nundro. Okay, select Nundro. Now do that check. And that should be at the 6 plus 10. Okay, so good. That works. Just like to check when I've put some of these codes in that I've not been using uh, very much. So with the whistle in hand, a character da, 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 can make a wisdom animal handling. So skill check. Skill. Ability equals wisdom. The skill equals... Ooh. Now... That's got a space in it. Is it going to... Let's see how it does that. I might need to put something else in there. Because that's got animal handling skill has got space in it. Uh, yeah, look, it's not it's not dealing with that at all. Do I take the space out to get that to work? Animal handling. Ah, there we go. All right, so little tip. If the skill has got a space in it, let's uh, just check it works before we, we go and say we've solved that issue. Nundro, D20. Yes, so he's made an animal handling skill check based on wisdom, which is great. That's not one of his strengths. <laughs> Weirdly enough, he's pretty strong. Okay, so that's how we do that. So if it's a skill check and the skill name like animal handling has a space in it you can remove the space and it will pick up and allow you to do that check so that's useful to know brilliant so on a successful check the albear comes immediately becomes friendly etc etc um quick look back at the module that's it that's that's all this is is you encounter an albear and it pretends attempts to rip your face off so we must remember let's get rid of nundro bye nundro um, must remember to put this owlbear out here and I'm going to pop it right there right by its nest okay all right close that uh, good done all right what about goblin uh, goblin cobbled renegades so again new scene renegades Renegades, there we go. All right, so we've got yet another new scene. Turn off the navigation. I need a map. Um, we're in maps. Choose file. Now, again, there's a couple ones here that Jumpy Solution has put, um, given us. I'm going to use this one. Uh, and this is just basically if they're doing anything overland, they might encounter it. So let's bring that up first. Okay, so this nice little map here. It's quite good. Uh, it's a bit difficult to see. Let's, uh, right, okay. Let's configure this. I'm going to change that to red for the moment. Ugh, I didn't want to do that, did I? That's not what I wanted to do, not background colour. Ugh. Oh, gosh, that was hideous. Uh, <laughs> what I wanted to do was go to grid, and I wanted to change the grid colour to red. Um, yeah, because it's quite faint on, on this background. Okay. So I want this bit here, if I move that out of the way, I want this rock arch here. I want them to effectively be able to walk across it, but it's going to be dodgy as. So I'm going to just move these squares down so that tokens moving across here, I can do that. So it's definitely going to be rough terrain. Um, I might even make that a dex check to climb across there once I've decided. But otherwise one cobbled on one blanket yep i'm willing to accept that that's a reasonable size um i might want to make that grid slightly slightly more visible there we go just slightly all right i'm happy with that uh, lighting i'm going to make this global illumination again um, and ambience weather effects i don't think i need any okay that's done i've still got this red around the outside that's going to annoy me get rid of that 
It was something like that originally. Save that. There we go. All right. So we need to go back to our island encounters, add a new page, Cobalt Renegades. Thank you very much. Slap that in there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, we've got some general text here first. A group of kobolds tries to ambush. The hiding in the rocks and light foliage make a dexterity stealth check for each of the kobolds. Um, rolling once for each of them using dexterity modifier plus two of the um, of the wingless. Uh, sorry, of the wingless kobolds. Compare the result to the passive passive wisdom um, perception. Now, again, just looking back on that other video, we had the passive uh, check, didn't we? Um, which gives that ho hoverable, <laughs> hoverable thing. Um, compared with the passive wisdom perception score. So I'm going to dump that in there. So I've just copied and pasted that. Close, have a look at this. So this is passive wisdom score for 13. We we don't know what they're going to be aiming for, what the DC is going to be, because the kobolds are hiding. Um, what happens if I take out... the actual number for it? DC, undefined passive wisdom. There we go. So it's just going to give us anybody that's in that um, default party it's just going to show us that. I like that. That's what I want. Okay, so it's going to say DC undefined passive wisdom perception. So let's just check the wording around that. Uh, comparing the results to the characters. Compare the results to the characters DC undefined passive wisdom perception scores. Any character who scores lower than the kobolds, uh, check result in surprise and loses their turn during the first round of combat. See surprise in the basic rules. Okay, so we have this reference, don't we? So can we do that reference here? Uh, da, 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 da. Surprise. Does that work? Uh, okay, so surprise isn't one of them. Is it because I didn't do a capital? No. Okay. That's fine. I know there was a list of the things that referenced for uh, surprise, but I haven't got it immediately available. Well, that's fine. Uh, I don't need to the, see the basic rules. Okay. Get rid of that. When the kobolds attack, so back to the adventure... Wow, that's a really, really detailed description there. Obviously, I'd want to be adding lots of flavour. Uh, and it's next I'm going to copy in the other things from here. Now, obviously, we can beef up any of these encounters we like by just throwing more kobolds in or... So it does say for, if they happen to encounter this at second level, add a couple of kobolds in. If it's there at third level, add even more kobolds in. So they're just basically chucking in more kobolds, uh, which is fine. Um, is there any rolls we need here? No, that's easy peasy. Okay, so this reckons four kobolds plus a winged kobold. Da, da, da. We go to our kobolds. So I'm going to assume that the, this little camp area up here, this is the, where the kobolds camp is. Um, so I'm going to assume the party are possibly coming along here and they're going to come down these steps to uh, to get down this cliff edge and, and go that way, which makes it perfect for the kobolds to ambush from over here. So our kobolds on the right, let's come and drop these geezers in. Now it reckons there's four normal kobolds. Okay, so we're going to stick these guys behind the rocks. Uh, and then there's one winged kobold i mean this is this is an easy easy fight i might pop the wing kobold because it can fly up there now what's quite important i think for this encounter is to 
make sure these guys are all hidden from view. Okay, so our party aren't going to notice them. Right, Hot Springs, Havoc, Cobalt Renegades, there, there, Albert. That's three encounters we've just thrown together um, really, really simply, nice and easy, job done, chuck the monsters on. Obviously, we can add a lot of flavour. Uh, I'm not worried about lots of lighting effects and things. I think what I, perhaps I need to do is just check to see if there's anything where perhaps we want to put some walls in. Um, probably don't need to bother, do we? It's going to be quite evident that they can't climb those cliffs. I think these maps are beautiful enough. We don't need to worry about it. Um, yeah, no, I, I think we can just do that without worrying about putting in actual walls. Uh, are there any lighting effects we want to put in? We've got global lighting in any way. Is there any sound effects we want to put in? Yeah, we could do. Just, you know, add a bit of uh, a bit of the water sounds we get up here. So if you remember, we already had some. It will be in Shipwreck Isle in sounds. We've got our beach waves. We can shove those in. Uh, it's a bit calmer here, so we can just leave that in a slightly quieter, so it's just gently in the background. Um, radius effect. Let's just make it 150. Stick that sound over the other side there. Okay, so if they're right near the beach, they can hear it. Let's move it in a little bit, I think. Because we've got it quite quiet. Uh, any other sounds that we want to include? Probably not. No, we could have ah, bubbling lava is not really a thing, <laughs> but there we go. Um, any sounds over here? I haven't got any bubbling sounds, which might work for this. We don't need it. We really, really don't. Um, what about Cobalt Renegades? I don't think we need any sounds here either. I'm going to call these three encounters done which means we have now covered everything there is in this module. Uh, let's just go back to, so we can close that, go back to our introduction. Um, so I've been through and done a little bit of a tidy up. We've now got this one folder, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle, which has got everything in it, including our encounters. They're all together in one nice place. In our actors folder, we've got our Stormwreck Isle encounters. Um, I haven't done the extra encounters in here. That's fine. I can do that all manually. I can just add it to those people without any drama. Um, so I've got my encounters in there for Stormwreck Isle and Fandelva. I've got my monsters, my NPCs, my players. I've got my prefabs for my campsites ready to go. Um, I've got my campsites over here as well. Um, I need to find a, you know some rocky mountainy ones um, anyway for that. Although... You know, I can potentially use you know this this cobalt uh, this cobalt renegade map. I can use that as a campsite for something else. You know, I can use them for anything I like. Um, got all of our items, which is a mess. None of this is tidied up yet. Um, we've got our journal entries. All the Stormwreck Isles are all in together, nice and neat and tidy. We've got only got one roll table, which is that loot that we did. Um, that needs to go into a folder. Uh, compendiums we don't need to worry about, encounters we don't need to worry about. This is all ready to go. It's all neat, tidy, uh, job done. Um, I don't think there's anything we need to do for Stormwreck Isle at all. If you think there's something else that's missing, or you think it might be worth adding on, uh, shout. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I think, with this particular thing, because remember, this is only one relatively short adventure in the whole series. I'm going to continue to expand this. So what I have got is I've got my Sword Coast map which is always available to the players all the time because although they're in um, they're down at Stormwreck Isle at the moment which is down here um, that's where they are at the moment they could go everywhere you can see I've got the Fandelver and Below stuff which all takes place uh, here from Neverwinter Fandelver's down here in the mine and, and basically they roam around this area here so I'm going to carry on building out this campaign world with the Fandelver below um, locations. Not necessarily because they will do them in order, but for example, there's a ruined town of Thunder Tree up here. Once that encounters in, they might they might go there 
outside of that Fandelver kind of series and deal with it. That's fine. They can do that. And it gives them a lot more freedom to move around, do what they want to do. And there's always something, even if they jump into an adventure partway through, there's always something for them to be cracking on with. And it's one of the things I really like about the VTT, not just Foundry, but Foundry as well, is the fact that we can just have all these things dotted around. When they visit Neverwinter, you potentially can have all of the different encounters and things in Neverwinter for when they go there, you've got shops set up and everything else. But our next thing will be Fandelva, and we'll continue this probably as a, a new um, new playlist as we build out Fandelva in a similar way, but probably a lot quicker because we're getting better with it now, aren't we? Thank you very much. Take care. If you've not subscribed, hardly any of you have compared to the amount of people who are watching some of these videos, please do. Even if you choose not to put notifications on, uh, it really, really makes a difference to the channel and to me and uh, my enthusiasm for carrying on doing this stuff and sharing it with you. Um, it's a lot quicker for me to do it without recording. Um, but uh, if you guys are enjoying it, finding it useful, it's worth doing. it. I'm going to also see if I can get a small group together to do a play test in Foundry of the uh, Dragons of Stormwreck Isle so that we can actually play test that, make sure everything works as expected and you guys can kind of uh, see what's happening with the players and what they encounter, the problems that they may or may not have and then we can solve them. Thanks guys, take care.